Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Bowley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It is Wednesday, May 6, 2020. We are pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Thursday, May 7th. Uh, futures are currently mixed, but there's a long way to go between now on Wednesday evening and tomorrow, Thursday morning. A lot can happen, so keep your eye out on the futures. But uh, as of uh, the current time here, Wednesday evening on the East Coast, uh, we do have uh, Dow futures, S&P futures lower, NASDAQ futures higher. That's been a common theme of late. Um, I wanna go over the agenda with you today. Um, got a couple things, um, one new segment I'll go over in just a second, but I'll start off uh, with the daily market recap. Gonna get into talking technically, I wanna go over the pitch, which is a new show on Stock Charts TV. Um, Grace and Rose, Mary Ellen McGonigal and me, uh, we were all on that show back on April 1st. Gonna have another edition coming up in another week. Uh, I'm not sure who's gonna be on, but it was a fun show. You might wanna check that show out when it comes on again. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about some of the stocks uh, in particular that Grayson and I had talked about and uh, performance since uh, that April 1st airing. So in talking technically, I'll talk a little bit about the pitch. I'm going to also look at the strong AD and weak AD chart lists that I had developed about a month ago. Uh, these have been unbelievable in terms of performance. Strong AD chart list has been great if you want to trade on the long side. Weak AD chart list has been great if you want to trade on the weeks or on the uh, short side. Um, AD standing for accumulation distribution. So a lot of the selections in these two chart lists are based on the accumulation distribution lines, that technical indicator. I'll talk about that in just a bit. Then we're going to get into stressing out a new segment. Um, and these are just areas that were really stressed out during the first decline in the market and they are still stressed out. You want to stay away from these groups. Then uh, earnings spotlight, there's some companies reporting after hours tonight. I wanted to go over some of those. And then we'll wrap up the show with the three you must see. Uh, before we get into any of that, though, I do want to mention a couple of things. First of all, go to earningsbeats.com. Sign up for our free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. Comes out Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings before the market opens. We'll have something to you in your inbox. Normally what I do is I write about a company that's either reported earnings, will be reporting earnings, or maybe it's just showing relative strength or weakness, or perhaps very strong accumulation distribution line or weak AD line, or maybe a combination of all three. Um, but I think these are trading candidates. I think certainly it's an educational uh, type of a newsletter. So if you're not already a subscriber, check it out. We also have specials. Uh, for folks to come on board at Earnings Beats uh, if you're a member of the Earnings Beats Digest. So there's a lot of reasons to be there. Also, on Saturday, I want to announce that uh, in our, what we call our war room, we developed this war room. We started doing this back when everybody had to stay at home. Uh, I think the first week we did it on a Friday, but since then we've been doing it on Saturdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. But we are going to have another war room this Saturday where normally I talk about whatever it is I want to talk about in the market. But this one's going to be even more special because we've got Grayson Rose uh, coming to join us from Stock Charts along with Bill Shelby. Uh, Grayson is going to talk a little bit about uh, chart lists, uh, organizing chart lists. He does a fantastic job of organizing his chart lists. I think you get a lot out of that. He's going to talk about uh, chart style buttons, how you can organize. It's just going to be a better way to manage your account at Stock Charts. And, uh, and then Grayson and I will also talk a little bit about the pitch and some of the charts. Uh, we'll go over some of the charts of the stocks that we talked about back on April 1st. And I'm gonna challenge Grayson to come prepared with at least another three to five stocks that he really likes. In addition to the ones he divulged back on April 1st, I'm gonna do the same. I think that'll be fun. And then uh, Bill Shelby, during his period with us on Saturday, is gonna be talking about the scan engine. He basically developed it at Stock Charts. There's no better person to talk to about scanning at Stock Charts than Bill. So he's going to join us. Going to go over some basic scans, also maybe a little bit more advanced. Um, and then he will work with us and our chart lists at, at Earnings Beats and talk about how we can scan, maybe improve some of the scans that we run. So I think it's going to be a fantastic webinar. It is free to everybody. One way to find out more about it is simply to come in and, and subscribe to the Earnings Beats Digest. We'll be 
uh, sending out a lot more information as we approach Saturday. The uh, webinar will start at 2 p.m. Eastern, and it will likely run to at least two hours, maybe two, two and a half hours, something like that. And it will be recorded. So if you have to leave, once you come in, we'll make sure that we can get the uh, recording to you for, uh, for your later review. All right, uh, let's get into the action on uh, Wednesday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, you can see, was down almost 1%. The S&P down about uh, 7 tenths of 1%. NASDAQ up uh, about a half percent. So NASDAQ going in the other direction. That's been kind of the theme over the past couple of months. The NASDAQ continues to outperform. I think there's very good reason for it. You've got a lot of companies on the NASDAQ 100 that not only are growing their earnings, but they're growing their earnings rapidly in a very low, historically low interest rate environment. Those earnings should be valued very, very high when you're in a low interest rate environment because there's no alternative to your money to investing. And as a result, you should command much higher PE multiples. Many of these companies are going to get it. They're getting it now. They're going to continue to get it. So, you know, I, I would continue to focus on some of the stocks that make up the NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100. Mid caps, not a good day. Small caps down over 1%, worst of all the major indices. And you can see these on a relative basis, just not performing well, down substantially from where they were a week ago. Look at the NASDAQ trying to break out from where it was a week ago. S&P lower, Dow lower, clearly the NASDAQ's where you want to be. Technology has been one of the best areas in the uh, NASDAQ um, composite. You've got technology continuing to move higher. It actually set a new high today uh, above where we were a week ago. I think technology has been strong. It was the only group, the only sector that was higher on uh, Wednesday. So of the 11 sectors, technology was up. The other 10 were down. But discretionary and communication services were barely down. Healthcare was down about 1%. And then on the far end of the spectrum, worst performer was utilities, down 3.4%. Look at the utilities rolling over and the uh, accumulation distribution also uh, beginning to take more of a nosedive. Where when you look at the uh, technology, we haven't broken out, but we certainly aren't bro breaking down. So I think overall, uh, you really wanna concentrate on the areas where we have seen relative strength. Technology, healthcare, communication services, those are three very solid areas of the market right now. All right, 10-year uh, treasury yield. I wanna mention that tomorrow morning we will get, on Thursday morning, again, this is being pre-recorded on Wednesday, um, but uh, Thursday morning, initial jobless claims will be out. The estimate is for 3.04 million. So 3.04 million initial jobless claims. Last week, 3.84 million. So we are forecasting it to come down a bit. Numbers are kind of all over the place, anywhere from about two and a half to four, four million. We'll see how that number comes out. That should impact, uh, could impact the 10-year treasury yield. We had a big rise in the 10-year treasury yield on yeah, Wednesday. Although you can see we hit 0 0.74 earlier in the day and then pulled back the rest of the day. But over the course of the last five days, we have seen the 10-year treasury yield rising. And what we normally see are financials outperforming when the yields are rising. We've been, we've been doing the opposite this week, which is really strange and which just tells me to be ex, you know, exceptionally cautious with the financial stocks right now. If the financials aren't being bought on a relative basis when the yield is rising, that um, is something to be a little bit concerned about in terms of uh, financial stocks. So for the most part, unless I'm in one of the industry groups that's been bucking the trend to the downside in financials, I would, for the most part, stay away from the financial group. I would stay away from utilities. I would stay away from energy. I would stay away from materials, um, you know, real estate. Those are areas that have not been performing well, are starting to roll back over again. They're, they're holding back the Dow and the S&P 500. And those are simply areas of the market you don't want to be in. You know, there are great areas of the market, but if you're long and you're in the spider, the problem is you're being dragged down by these companies that are in sectors and industry groups that are not performing well. So I would hesitate to be in some of those ETFs that are being dragged down by the, by the weakest of the week and concentrate just in the areas that are working uh, really well. Um, all right, let's keep moving on. Um, talking technically. I wanted to mention talking technically about the pitch 
That's a show that uh, I mentioned I was on back uh, in April. This is one of the stocks that I gave back on April 1st, wing stock. You wouldn't think a wing place would be a stock that you'd maybe consider in a pandemic, but I want you to notice one major thing with this stock. From the February high down to the March low, stock went from 102 down to 44. It lost close to 60% of its value in a month. Look at the AD line. At the low, the AD line was actually setting a new high. So yeah, we were getting a lot of gap downs, but after the gap downs, there was a lot of buying. The AD line concentrates on what's going on during the trading day. It ignores what happened overnight and the gap down at the open. So if you want to take into account the gap downs, I think that there's a lot of manipulation uh, over the past couple of months, personally. I think the fear that was being fed to everyone by the, by the media, I think had folks on edge. They were just selling. They weren't using, uh, you know, they weren't going back looking at charts, looking at the things I'm showing you right here. Um, Wingstop, yeah, it was, get, it was going down a lot at the open, but we had a lot of hollow candles in here, meaning that after the opening bell, there was a lot of buying that took place. Heavy volume, AD line moving higher, and look what has happened since. Wingstop back on, uh, was that March 19th? Hit a low about 44. On Wednesday, it closed at 122.98. This thing won't even come down and test its 20 day moving average. And we've seen some great numbers coming out, uh, uh, numbers that they've forecast uh, look really good. Wingstop came out and announced when the pandemic hit that they were going to uh, uh, have free shipping for three weeks, free delivery. Shipping, I don't know about shipping wings, but delivery. Free delivery. Um, and I think that helped them grow their market share. I think that was a really smart business move back then. And this stock has come roaring back. It's been a leader in the, among restaurants for the last several years. So it was, it's not like this has just become a good stock. This was a good stock even before the pandemic. And they found a way to, uh, to work through this. But Grayson, he gave five stocks back on uh, April 1st. I gave five stocks. The S&P 500 since April 1st is up 10.21%. The five stocks I gave, the average is 28.96% higher. Pretty good until I saw Grayson was 35.14%. He actually outperformed me, which was pretty amazing. Uh, Five-week performance, his stocks, his five stocks averaged gaining 35%. So when he joins us on Saturday um, for our webinar in our war room, uh, this is one of the things I'm going to ask him. Grayson, give me another three to five stocks. So you won't want to miss that. All right, uh, let's keep moving on. Strong AD versus weak AD chart lists. Let me just tell you that over the course, probably of the last 10 years, you know, I have a strong earnings chart list that I'm pretty proud of putting that together because of my background in public accounting. I like fundamentals, but then I like to combine the fundamentals with the technical. So my strong earnings chart list is a chart list that has companies on it that have beaten top, uh, top line and bottom line, their latest quarterly report. And then also are liquid. They trade enough shares, you know, so I don't want to get caught in any stocks that are illiquid. Um, and uh, also show a lot of relative strength. Now, I added one thing, and that is accumulation distribution to the strong earnings chart list. Those companies now must have strong accumulation distribution as well. That's the strong earnings chart list. About a month ago, I developed the strong AD chart list, which only focuses on relative strength and accumulation distribution. So these stocks don't have to beat any earnings reports. They are just simply some of the best technical stocks you're going to find. I also developed the weak AD chart list, which is the opposite. These are stocks that have horrible relative strength and have horrible um, AD lines, accumulation distribution lines showing that really there's more distribution taking place in these stocks. Now, since I developed these about a month ago, the strong AD chart list has been crushing the weak AD chart list on a percentage basis. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just about every day that we've seen this uh, outperformance on the strong AD list. Now, we did go through about a three to five day period about a week ago when the airlines were bouncing and cruise lines were bouncing and hotels and casinos and, you know, all, everything else, uh, gambling stocks, all that was uh, bouncing to the upside. Weak AD chart list outperformed strong AD. That was for about a three to five day period. But other than that, 
the strong AD list has swamped the weak AD list. Let me give you an example here. Look at the weak AD list. This is just from Wednesday, but this has been consistent now for the last five days, five days in a row. Here's the weak AD list. I want you to look at the stocks on this list that have gained, that gained 5% or more today. There were six out of, you wanna see how many are in here. You can always see how many uh, stocks are in a chart list by pull, pulling up the view list as edit. 268 charts out of potential 500. So 268 charts are on my week 80 chart list. Six of them went up 5% or more today. Another five of them went up 3% to 5%. So a total of 11 stocks went up 3% today. 11 out of 268, that's about 4%. Let me pull up the strong AD chart list. I want you to see what happened here. Strong AD chart list. Um, over 5%, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to drag this down a ways. Let's see if we can find how many, there we go. So starting with Peloton, which gained 5% today, you can see all of these stocks gained 5% or more. There were, I've got it written down here, I can tell you, 32 of them. So 32 stocks have gained 5% or more today on the strong AD chart list. 3% or more goes all the way down to here at AVLR which gained 3.04%. So um, there were a total of 56 that gained 3% or more. 11 on the weak AD list gained 3% or more. So 4% of the weak AD stocks gained 3% or more. 4% of them gained 3% or more. On the strong AD list, there was about 15% that gained 3% or more. Now I can't tell you that every one of these are gonna be winners on the strong AD list and everyone's gonna be losers on the weak AD list. That's not an accurate statement. But what I can tell you is that your odds are a lot better. When the strong AD chart list performs like it did today and like it has the last five days, if you're trading off of this chart list on the long side, you have a much better chance of making money. And likewise, on the flip side, if you look at the weak stocks, now this is the strong AD chart list, but these are the ones that were on the strong AD chart list that had bad days today. 5% um, or more loss, a total of uh, 13. 3% uh, more loss, 3% or more, all the way down to here, there were 38 of them. 38 out of 372, so about 10% of the strong AD chart list lost 3% today. So if you were just, blindly picking stocks on this chart list, you would have a 10% chance, every one you pick, you'd have a 10% chance of losing 3%. But the weak AD list, if we pull this up in the same mode, looking at losers, look at all the losers down to 5%. Let's see, still going. Okay, there's 5%. And then 3%, you got to keep going. Look at all these stocks that have lost 3% or more, all the way down to Citizens Financial Group, which lost 3.02%. Um, 82 of them, yeah, 82 out of 268 lost at least 3%. And uh, 38 out of 372 on the strong AD chart list. So 10% on the strong AD chart list lost more than 3%. And on the weak chart list, you had 82 out of 268, which is more than 30%, lost more than 3%. So do you see the, the skewing? And I could go back and read numbers. I've been keeping track of this on a daily basis, but it's been almost the exact same thing. Uh, Tuesday, losing more than 3% on the weak AD, 29.48%. 79 of them lost more than 3%. On the strong AD list, 18 or 4.8% lost more than 3%. And if we're looking at gainers, 3%, Tuesday, the strong AD chart list was 25% uh, uh, of the stocks gained at least 3%. On the weak AD chart list, only 7% gained at least 3%. So these numbers, and I can go back and read you Monday. Monday's about the same thing. Um, you know, on the 3% or more gain on Monday, strong AD, 25% of them gained at least 3%. On the weak AD, only 12% gained at least 
So, and this again, five days in a row now. If you're a member at earningsbeats.com and you're also at least a, an extra member or above at Stock Charts, I can give you this. I, you can go into our website, click a link, and you can literally download these two chart lists right into your account. It'll take you about 10 seconds. And I'm being generous, maybe five seconds. Click a link, type in a password, and it'll ask you if you want to set up a new list. Type in your new list, hit, hit the button, and you're in. Everything's downloaded right into your account. Simple as can be. So go on over to earningsbeats.com and at a minimum, sign up for the free newsletter. But if you want to become a member and get these, uh, these uh, chart lists, um, it's very simple. Um, you literally go into the left navigational panel after you sign in to Earnings Beats and under members, you'll see this, uh, see an area called chart list. Go right in and then scroll down. You'll find the chart list, so easy. All right, um, what else do we have I wanna go over here? Well, let's go into the stressing out segment. And stressing out is a new segment where uh, industry groups that had performed horribly from the February 19th top to the March 23rd low. I went back and I looked at the bottom 15 out of 104 industry groups. And, I, and seven of them, I mean, all of them, none of them are doing great, but seven of them I wanted to go through and just show you that these are all continuing to stress out. If you're in these stocks or in these uh, industry groups, if your stocks that you own on the long side are in these industry groups, you are probably not a happy camper right now as they continue to roll over. Airlines, horrible. This is just a, a very, very weak area of the market. You can see, um, actually in my daily market report to members earlier today, I pointed out we have a descending triangle. You have the lower lows, or excuse me, lower highs, equal lows, and we have now broken down beneath that. That is not good, the ascending, or excuse me, descending triangle bearish pattern. We have confirmed it volume heavy. Look at the accumulation distribution. You know, when you go through the strong AD chart list and you start pulling up these charts, what you're going to see is price action going down and accumulation distribution going up. With the weak AD chart list, you're going to see prices going down and accumulation distribution going down as well. That's exactly what you see here with the airlines. Very, very weak group. All right, uh, other groups, how about gambling? Mentioned them earlier, check this out. We tried to get through and actually broke out here above 550, but have since pulled back down. But look at the accumulation distribution. We're rising, but the accumulation distribution tells me to be really careful with this group. If we go back down and close below about 510 on uh, the gambling index, I would be very careful with gambling stocks or I would be shorting them. If, uh, if your preference is to short. Full line insurance, another weak group. Way down, bounced a little bit, but not like the overall market. Certainly nothing like what the NASDAQ has done. I mean, NASDAQ's not far from getting back to the February high. Look at where we are on full line insurance. Breaking back down below the 20 day moving average, the accumulation distribution setting a new low, nothing to like here. Um, then we've got recreational services moving down, got a little bit of a bounce. And then with just a few days, big volume moving below the 20 day, look at the accumulation distribution, ready to set a new low, stay away. How about the hotels and lodging REITs? Big move down, try and get back through 60, couldn't do it, rolling over. Now we're about to break back down to the lowest level we've seen in about five or six weeks. Not good there. Aerospace. Aerospace, big move down, rebound, haven't even been able to get back to the 1100, rolling back over again to new one month lows and look at the AD line, setting new lows. Stay away from aerospace. And then in the oil patch, energy, we've got oil equipment and services. Been trying to trend higher, which is good, but as it trends higher, AD line trending lower. I would be careful if this thing breaks that trend line, I'd keep probably these recent lows in play around here, 95 or so. You see that give way, be careful. I wouldn't be surprised to see this index go right back down to new lows, or at least go back down and retest. All right, so that is stressing out. Let's uh, take a look at a couple of earnings reports out after the closing bell. 
today. And I'm just gonna pull up a handful of these. All right, um, let me see which one I'll go through first. Let's do PayPal. Uh, I'm not gonna look at the charts. I just wanna, you know, these are um, some stocks that you can see after hours. PayPal up 6.8%. Uh, this stock looked really good heading into earnings. I'm not surprised by the reaction there. Peloton, been talking a lot about Peloton. Look at this, up another 10%. This stock not only is going up, but there is a ton of short interest in this stock. Last time I looked, the short percentage of the float was over 40%, maybe 45%. That's an outrageous number. You're gonna have a lot of short scrambling for the exits in the morning. Uh, let's see, what else do we have on here? How about Ring Central? Ring Central down 3.58%. Uh, I think it's an opportunity though. The stock's trying to make a breakout. I think to pull back, this could be similar to F, uh, or, uh, 5 9 Inc, FIVN, two days ago, it was gapping down after earnings and then took off. I could see Ring doing the same thing. Uh, gap down could create an opportunity here. How about Twilio? Twilio, wow, what a report we got out of Twilio. Look at this, up almost 25% after hours tonight. Huge move up. We are going to break out on Twilio tomorrow. Huge, huge uh, move to the upside. How about Etsy? Etsy should be benefiting from the stay at home. It's broken out. This is another one gapping down with earnings, likely to gap down tomorrow. Anything down close to that 20 day or maybe into this gap support area, if it were to get back down to around the 70 area, I think that could be very interesting on Etsy. Um, last one I'll pull up is, which one do I wanna do? How about um, Square? How about Square? Square coming out after hours, down 2.3%. This one doesn't look as good to me as PayPal. And as a result, uh, we're getting a move lower on Square, but we're you know, moving higher on PayPal. All right, let's go through the three you must see. And I'm gonna try to go through these pretty quickly, but these are three stocks that I simply would just stay the heck away from. They just don't look good to me. Starting with Mosaic. Look at the accumulation distribution line, pointing straight down, we got the move lower. Rebound back to 13, but it's starting to roll over. There's a shooting star candle, false breakout, and a big down day afterwards. I would be really careful. I don't like Mosaic. LNC, this is uh, Lincoln National in the financial space. Struggling to get through 37.50, rolled back over beneath the moving averages. Look at that AD line rolling back over. Stay away. And then finally, the last one, VMC, Vulcan Materials. Big move down, rally, but while we're rallying and trying to break out, look at the accumulation distribution, continuing to set new lows and then down 7% on Wednesday. I see this one continuing to roll over to the downside. Any kind of strength back up near the moving averages could be an opportunity to short. All right, that's it. Uh, again, go to earningsbeats.com, sign up for that uh, free newsletter, Earnings Beats Digest. Comes out Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays. Love to have you. Happy trading, everybody. Be back next week. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.